This is the Kia EV6 and I've been living with it for about a week. So I thought before I showed up to you guys, I should give it a clean first because in this review, it's gonna be like a real world example of what it's like to live with an electric vehicle from Kia. If you enjoy videos about electric vehicles, technology and more from an Australian perspective, please do consider subscribing. It's absolutely free and it genuinely does support the channel. Plus it's also Patreon where you can support me over there as well. Chat to Mark as a present, so if you want to see a particular section, jump to it. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this video because this is going to be a day in the life of the Kia EV6. The Kia EV6 comes in seven exterior color choices and two interior choices of black with light gray or black cloth headliner. There's the Air rear wheel drive version, GT Line rear wheel drive version, and this, the GT Line all wheel drive. The Kia EV6 comes with a 7 year 150,000 km warranty which covers the car and battery. Priced from $67,990 before on road costs, this model is $82,990. But this is one of the fastest cars that Kia makes. So let's get on with it because I've got to ruin the weekend and do lots of errands. Whilst the girls are at a birthday party, let's talk about the exterior, shall we? The back, I love it. It's uh, very modern, futuristic. You've got this massive LED bar at the back here. Big new Kia logo. Rear sloping glass, which is again absent with a rear wiper like the Ionic 5. I've used it in rain this time and um, yeah, it was fine. It was fine. Uh, you've got the rear spoiler here to help push that wind down and clear the glass. And coming down beneath that, You've got a little bit of a uh, silver highlight, a bit of a um, chrome strip, shall we say. This is a charging port and this is not, but that's fine because it's actually a good location, I think, but we'll talk about charging later on. Then we've got a little bit of piano finish black down the bottom here, which is awesome at picking up <laughs> dirt, mud, scrapes and all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, that's one of the things I don't really like about uh, modern cars that have a piano finish. So more on that soon. The profile of the Kia EV6 is modern, sleek, very sporty looking. Not becoming of an SUV, more like a sporty hot hatch. You've got this interesting line with a bit of a break down the side of the car. Once again, piano finish at the bottom. Smallish windows with a little bit of small window pane for the rear passenger. And side view mirrors that kind of look like they've got the fake eyelash look to them. You know what I mean? Bit of Dame Medna average sort of look. It's, it's okay, I don't mind it. Just, it's, it, it's what's calling out to me. Okay, the wind's picking up, so apologies if the sound is terrible right now, but I need to finish off the front here before that party finishes. The front of the EV6 is something I like and don't like. It's, what I don't like is it's a bit retro, a little bit same, same as most other cars out there right now. You've got some very aggressive looking headlights, which is befitting of a very fast car. Then down beneath that, You've got a lot of black piano finish once again. You've got your radar. You've got one of your many cameras around this car, which I'll talk to you later about. LED headlights as well as LED runtime daylights. Clamshell design bonnet, which is actually the modern bit. I like that bit. And a nice sloping front windscreen, which is great in terms of visibility. Its dimensions are 4,695 millimeters long, 1,890 millimeters wide, and 1,550 millimeters tall. So compared to the Tesla Model Y, its proportions are very similar, except for its height, where it's seven centimeters shorter. So after going to Bunnings and getting a few things, you know, just more for demonstration purposes, one of the awesome features of this car is an auto boot opening. So you can keep your hands occupied and let the car do the heavy lifting. Boot capacity in the rear wheel drive is 490 litres and 480 litres in this all wheel drive model. You've got remote seat release, extending that storage to 1590 litres. Coming to the front, in the rear wheel drive version, because you've only got the one modem, it's 52 litres, but here it's only 20 litres. And the glove box is huge. The interior of the Kia EV6 is sleek and contemporary. Very dark, moody, it's basically all black inside of here. They've actually used recycled materials, yet it feels premium. Touch surfaces are pretty nice for the majority of it. 
But once again, the Piano Black plastic finishes are just great at collecting dust, fingerprints, and over time will scratch up. So I highly recommend you do a vinyl wrap on them. On the driver's door, you've got full control of all windows with order up and order down for the front. Lock for the rear windows, door unlock and lock, as well as mirror controls, and the mirrors fold in when parked. Up above, we've got a stun roof, which is only unfortunately one half of the car, not the full sort of moon roof that you saw in the Ionic 5. And it has a cover, so it actually helps keep heat out as well as sound. And you can either crank it somewhat, or you can do the full retract or close. Getting a comfy position in this car is very easy to do. The seat is nice, well cushioned. It's in a bit of a velour, velvety sort of stuff. And the seat moves no less than 10 different ways. Just missing out on the lower leg um, recliner function that was seen in the Ionic 5. Steering wheel is adjustable by both height and also reach, but it's not electronic. Rear leg room in the Kia EV6 is actually excellent. The wheelbase is 2,900mm, which is identical to the Tesla Model Ys. This seat is in my position right now, and as you can see, there is tons of knee room. Head height is quite reasonable, but I'm 5 foot 10. If you were taller, you might be getting up into that roof because, well, quite thick and well padded. For the rear passengers, there's obviously power windows, which you have to press and hold to get all the way down and up. It's very windy out there today, so apologies if I just buffeted the microphone. Um, but as you can see, it goes all the way down, which is pretty good for the kids, albeit the actual height of these are quite tall. I'm going to close that because that's really, really windy out there. Now, speaking of wind, you've also got some vents in the B pillars, which I actually prefer, I've decided. I've been in cars where they're in the center here, and unless there's actually two of them, there's always gonna be a bit of a fight over who gets what. But in this car, yeah, you're all good. Under thigh support is okay, and it will comfortably seat two people across here. You could do three, there is position for it, as well as ISOFIX, but it's gonna be definitely very squashy. I wouldn't recommend it for, let's say, three teenagers or three adults. Very squishy. There's two of the five USB ports in this car, conveniently located in the sides of the uh, front seats. Each door has got its own water bottle spot. In addition, the front and also in the rear, you've got a nifty little uh, drink position here, but these are quite small, so good luck getting normal sized bottles in. Shopping done in readiness for tonight, and uh, let me just get this stuff inside and we'll do some in more interior. One of the features of the Kia EV6 that I really love is this auto presenting door handles, which when you walk up to them, they present themselves so you know how to actually open the door handles, unlike some cars. For the driver and passenger up front, we've got two 12.3 inch screens. One is for your infotainment, climate, and other sort of EV settings. And the other one obviously is your pinnacle. The Kia EV6 features a Meridian sound system, which is brilliant. It's really loud, quite impressive. 12 speakers, including a subwoofer. Connectivity is plentiful with Bluetooth, DAB radio, and wired Android Auto, and wired Apple CarPlay, which is one of my irks with this car in that we've got an awesome, well-positioned wireless charging spot for your phone here. Why not just actually use wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay? The system is nice and zippy and fast with an EV menu where you can schedule your uh, charging times, built-in maps and navigation, which is surprisingly good and actually will help with the heads-up display, which I'll talk about later. The usual suspects are here with phone, phone mirroring, but if the infotainment system, you've got this rather unique feature, which I'm not exactly a huge fan of, but perhaps if I had the car longer, I might fall in love with it. But I'll, say, I'll tell you what my issue is. Right now, you've got the quick shortcuts to map, navigation, radio, medium. But if I press this button down here, it changes over to your climate control, which is kind of great because you've got two different dials to control the temperature on one side or the other. So it's independent uh, dual zone system. Uh, you can synchronize them, obviously. Turn the driver only mode on, which is brilliant to save energy and instead of actually wasting it on the entire cabin if it's just yourself driving. And this auto climate feature, which is again, brilliantly executed, whereby you either go one, two or three, and it will get the cabin temperature to just where you want them, either slow, medium or fast. So if you're the sort of person who gets into a car and it's like, oh, juice is too hot in here, or maybe it's winter, it's too cold in here. You press that little sucker, 
dial it up and the fans will go crazy to get to that magical temperature that you've already set. On the center console, you've got quick access to your ventilated and heated seats, as well as the steering heating control as well. Then coming further back, we've got the button for the cameras, auto hold, which is kind of not needed if you actually use your iPad mode, and the parking sensors, which are full 360 suite on the Kia EV6. The wireless charging spot I spoke about before, as well as a little cubby for some more storage, not only in the console, but also beneath as well. The car features no less than five USB spots, a mixture of USB-C and USB-A, as well as two 12 volt sockets, one at the front here and one in the boot. Now before we get underway, I'm just gonna try and show you this because uh, it's very hard for me to show you otherwise without being dangerous. Um, the heads up display. There's obviously a pinnacle in front of me, which is you know great, I'll talk about it in a second, but this is the one I really want to try and show to you because, you know what, in the Tesla Model 3, I, I love the center display. It's awesome, it's upgradable, uh, and you get used to the speed on the left-hand side. But conversely, you know, there's a reason on the Model S and X, they actually have a center pinnacle for the driver, and that's because having it in front of you is handy. And this is the solution that I think Tesla should implement for the Model 3. Um, and that's a heads up display because this thing works brilliantly. It actually will um, show you not only the speed you're doing right now, it will also with the camera tell you the speed of the last time that it saw and it will give you directions in an augmented reality um, way which um, is difficult for me to describe so I'm just going to try and show you what that looks like here in my local area. Now you can see how the left hand indicator is coming on so I'm navigating to a rapid charger that's near us and uh, so the system actually looks like it's floating out in front of me and you have these little prompts as to where you're going left right u-turn whatever it might be and it matches up somehow it's kind of magic with the road and it gives me a representation i get probably really can't see it on the um display here but it it floats and it's coming towards me and it's saying hey you need to turn left up ahead it's something that's quite remarkable and something that I wish like well, every car should have. If you're doing something let's say naughty um, and you're veering out of lane it will have these little arrows pointing going hey 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 you'll get a vibration through the steering wheel and it'll make a noise. Um, three different th systems which I think works really really well. So what's it like to drive the Kia EV6? Well, let's kick it off with visibility. And out the front here and to the sides, it's great. I can see really well. A pillar is not too uh, massive. Um, B pillar is to my rear, so it's no issue whatsoever. Plus it's also got this unique feature with uh, blind spot detection. When you indicate right or left, on the actual pinnacle in front of me, it will have a brief display in like a, with the, one of the cameras and show me what's in my blind spot very well executed and you also get like a little orange light as well. View out the back through the rear view mirror is okay. It's um, the mirror is actually large so I think that actually helps with uh, perception and understanding um, what is where and uh, um, I think I preferred this mirror say over I don't know the Model 3s and the side mirrors are also large uh, which again helps with visibility and makes you appreciate the humps on the size of this car. In terms of grip and handling the 20 inch Continental tyres are pretty good uh, they're not terribly noisy like some cars can be and um, I haven't felt uh, nervous uh, driving this car whatsoever. Ride quality is excellent and this has actually been tuned to Australian conditions and at first I was struggling to find the difference between it and the Ionic 5. Then I discovered a little bit of road that's near here and it's got that terrible sort of undulating uh, nature of it, you know where it, most cars it will just make it bounce around and in my MG ZS EV, man that just keeps on bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. Terrible coils, really bad. Whereas this Nah, it's really well refined. In fact, I could throw it into corners and do some spirited driving and it stays pretty level for an SUV, remembering the size of this thing, and wherever I point it, it will go. And that's the thing with the Kia EV6, it's a beautiful drive experience. 
There's four different drive modes and you select it by pressing this button and you've got normal, sport, eco and if I press and hold it, it goes to snow. Can I say, all, all that's happening here is it's changing the profile of the acceleration. And in eco, when you put your foot down flat, say, it will slowly accelerate up and give you the maximum possible range. Whereas if I put it into sport, just a little tap on the pedal and it goes super fast. There's also supposedly some changes to steering wheel um, behavior here, how it actually handles with that. But I couldn't actually feel that difference. And if anything, the steering feels a little disconnected and a little light and I would much rather a little bit more feel through the steering but conversely because our roads are bad um, you don't get that shudder and that nastiness that you can sometimes get through sportier cars. On all four wheels there's disc brakes and they're 325 millimeters for those who want to know and they are they do a great job, they bring the car to a stop really well. Appreciate that this is 2.5 tonnes. Um, the rear wheel drive, because I've only got the one motor, is 2.4 tonnes. And the brake pedal feel, thankfully, is awesome. Uh, my recent experience in the Tesla Model 3, the made in China one, um, the brake on that was terrible. Uh, it was digital, it was like on or off, and it was like you're chunking on some wood. Whereas this, you've got a little bit of play and you can feather it and actually control the braking really nicely. However, Regen, you've got eye pedal here. So you know what? You don't even need to touch the brake if you're actually, you know, you're, you're good at accelerating and slowing the car down, which, who is it? To change Regen, you've got your paddles behind the steering wheel. The right hand one goes down to level zero, and then it behaves very much like a manual car with a clutch. You know, when you put the clutch in, the car will just coast. So right now, I'm on level zero, and I'm gonna take my foot off and we're really not slowing very much at all. I'm going 16, 14, 13, you get the idea. I go up to level one, it's gonna to start to slow the car down somewhat. Level two, a little bit more. Level three is kind of the default mode in this car and I'll talk more about it in a second. But level four is where you should be and level four is actually eye pedal mode. And by taking my foot off the accelerator, I didn't touch the brake then, it brings the car to a complete stop and it's going to hold it here. So I could be in an incline or a decline and the car will not go anywhere. The Kia EV6 is 5 star NCAP rated and has got a whole massive suite of safety features. So here are just some of them. Driver attention alert, haptic steering wheel feedback along with audio and visual cues for things like rear and front cross traffic alert, rear crash warning, auto stop, lane keep assist, lane follow assist, and seven airbags. Turning circle is 11.6 meters, which is okay. I think it's pretty average for this size of vehicle. Um, I will not do this in one go. Nope, it's gonna be a two point turn. Uh, selecting drive and reverse on this is through this rotary dial here in the center, which I really do like. It's actually quite logical. This is a, something that I'd like all cars to sort of adopt if they're electric, that is. In a single motor spec, Power is 168 kilowatts or 350 newton meters of torque. And in the all wheel drive version, that bumps up to 239 kilowatts of power and 605 newton meters of torque. Before we get out onto the open road, I need to think about maybe putting some electricity in this because of tonight's special event. And uh, charging this, well, most people will be doing it at home. And so that is either done through here. You can open up, by the way, with the little button inside. and. This takes either a CCS or CCS combo charger for at home use with the included, included Tesla um, uh, charger. And this is 2.3 kilowatts on a 10 amp cycle. So it's only going to give you about 10 kilometers of range per hour. The Kia EV6 can actually go up to three phase, 32 amp. 11 kilowatt charger, giving you about 50 kilometers of range per hour. But if you're the sort of person who doesn't like waiting around for nothing, this has got an excellent secret. And uh, to do that, we need to get to a DC fast charger. Acceleration test. Let's go into the start of the freeway here, making sure it's safe. We're in sport mode, it's all clear. Three, two, one. That felt fast-ish, 
Uh, I think 0 to 100 k's per hour in this all-wheel drive model is about 5.2 seconds. So I'll be curious to see in the edit how it actually turned out. Uh, single motor version, it's about 7 point something seconds. I'll put it on screen now. Um, in terms of uh, wind noise and road noise and just general ambience of the cabin right now, we're doing 80 kilometers per hour and on nice asphalt, the sound through the tires is, it's okay. It, it's kind of normal to be honest. And I think those sportier 20 inch rims aren't exactly helping that very much, but conversely, they do provide very good grip and a relatively comfy sort of ride. Wind noise, I'm hearing something from the front uh, A-pillar mirror zone and definitely up here uh, with the sunroof. So now we're getting into a 100k per hour zone and it's become a noisier cabin. So I'll close this sunroof. That's helped it. So there's definitely been some noise coming off the roof here. So I have to say that that's uh, part of the aerodynamic, um, uh, well, uh, turbulence of this car. It's quiet. And once again, with the absence of an engine, uh, it's, it's obviously a lot more pronounced as to any noises you may well hear. And, uh, you know, just pump some tunes, play an audio book, uh, listen to your favorite podcasts. You, 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 you won't hear anything of it, of it and I could quite easily speak right now to the girls who are sitting in the back there um, and have a conversation with them without having to speak quite loudly kind of like I am now because I'm trying to help out this microphone for the audio for you guys. Have you noticed in this review how it's all been really complimentary and everything is great and awesome? Well here are five things that maybe aren't so great or awesome. Number one the piano finish here as well as in here. And that piano finish, I've got my doubts it's gonna last, especially on the outside with exposure to the sunlight. It, it'll be the first thing to crack over time. Crack, I said, crack. <laughs> and the first thing most people do when they get a piano finish is they wrap them, right? So it's kind of like, well, this is what we all do. Why not just go with these other sort of surfaces that are easy to keep and maintain and don't show up? Dust, fingerprints, you name it. And well, they get scratched quite easily. So yeah, one. Number two, these headrests. Whilst they look futuristic and well, very bespoke, uh, they're not very good if you're just sitting around waiting for someone or at a rapid charger. You, you don't sit back and lean into it very nicely. It's fine when you're driving, don't get me wrong, but all other situations, they're just too far forward. And uh, you know, the back of this chair, by the way, is designed for as a, a coat rack sort of thing. So yeah, it's got utility, it's got dual purpose, clever, very clever, but I don't know, it, it, they're annoying. Number three, no rear heated seats or privacy shade for the passengers. Number four, the wireless charging pad. Great feature, awesome location. But why doesn't the infotainment system actually have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay? It, it doesn't make sense where you've got to keep the USB plugged in down there, you put your phone down in the little underneath cradle section, but it's really, it's, it's hard to get to, or conversely, you put it up here into one of these spots, making the wireless charging spot useless. So before I get to my last one, I actually thought of one and it's a biggie. So this is gonna be number six. Rewind to number five, and that is that there's no app support right now for this car in Australia. Overseas there is, so you can actually precondition your cabin and do other really cool stuff with it. But with this one, no, it's not available just yet. If that changes, I will pin a comment down below, so look out for that before you uh, maybe unfairly judge it. So that was a legit number five, and this is a bonus number six and that is that the frunk is too small. This is the all-wheel drive model, meaning you actually get the smaller frunk, and it's only about 20 liters. It's only good for your charging cable paraphernalia, just. Um, if you go for the rear-wheel drive single motor version, it increases to about 50-something liters, but that's still half of what most other car makers are doing. And that's because they've got a lot of crazy business going up the front here. And is it necessary, all this stuff up the front? Yeah, sure, that gives you that long wheelbase, so it gives you all the space inside. But conversely, um, the new awesome thing about electric vehicles is that 
you have a front where you're never used to. And remember, this car is limited with its storage already. You know, 484 to 90 liters or 1,490 liters with the seats down in the back. This could have been a bonus extra which would help sell its utility. But unfortunately, no, it's not here, is it? But you know what? I think those five, six things aren't that bad realistically because there's a lot I really do like about this car. And um, to finish this video, because it's getting dark out there, I want to give this a go and do a little bit of glamping. So we'll get the car in. I'll do a light, nice little remote parking session. And if you want to see that full video, click up here somewhere where you can see how this car can actually do autonomous um, parking by itself as well as assisted with you inside of it. It does parallel, it does perpendicular and uh, summon in and out of garages. So yeah, check that out if you want to see it. I'll get the car in the garage and we'll give this a good go. So now we're doing an ultra rapid session, but I've got a neighbor here and so far I've only got 185 kilowatts of power coming through, so it's not the fastest, but I'll have a quick check now and let's see how it's faring. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, it was actually at 233 for just a moment and then of course when I, by the time I got my camera started, it had dropped down to 205. But nonetheless, what's going to happen here, this is an 800 volt architecture, which is to say it can accept a really high rapid rate of charge up to 350 kilowatts of power. That's like 350,000 watts. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a massive amount of energy that can be pumped into this car at one time. And it won't actually go there, typically around 220 kilowatts, but it does it as a sustained rate. So most cars that go up and they quickly go down, it's like a bit of a swoosh, but this one goes up, and then suddenly drops down near the end. That means it, within five minutes, get 100 kilometers of range, or from 10% to 80% in as little as 18 minutes. And that's gonna give you over 300 kilometers of range. Now, these cars, no matter what you get, the rear wheel drive, the all wheel drive, they've both got a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery, 72.5 of that usable. The claimed efficiency using the WLTP cycle for the rear wheel drive is 16.5 kilowatt hours per 100 Ks, and for the GT versions, which are all wheel drive, 17.2 to 18 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. In my experience, when I've been driving this car, I've been getting actually around about the 20 mark, which is in line with the EV database, and that's a very good uh, reckoner for real world range, not the WLTP version. Uh, and if you want to actually know a bit more about that, maybe click up here to follow uh, what I'm talking about. But what that really what that really means is that this can do about 430 kilometers um, if, if you go by Kia's rating, but on mine, it's only going to get about 380 to 400 kilometers of range from this battery. So still really respectable, and and once again, I've purposely let this go down to a very low point so that I could do this rapid fast charge session. You normally wouldn't do that if you actually had ready access to a power point at home because you can just plug in your slow grading charger, the EVS Seesaw, the 10 amp, they go slow, giving you about 10 kilometers of range per hour, which typically for most people who do about 30 to 40 kilometers per day a typical commuting, that gets replaced in three to four hours. So by the time you've plugged in, had your dinner and you go to bed, your car's already recuperated or re, um, regained rather that energy that you've expended that day driving. And this is a good behavior to do. Always be charging ABCs and do it slow and steady. Ultra rapid charging like this is something you try to avoid because well, right now this car is very actively trying to cool that battery to make sure it doesn't get too hot because remember it's throwing a lot of energy through it. And uh, nonetheless, it can still handle it and the battery warranty remember is seven years. So that's mighty impressive. Hey, I'm gonna have a cup of tea. Would you like one? Hey, hey, okay, here we go. Look, this one's yours. Um, oh, you got your hands full? I'll put it down for you, okay. Uh, uh, chink, cheers. Grab a seat and we'll watch this guy from YouTube. It's not bad. Bit, of, bit obnoxious sometimes, but anyway. Let's talk about what I love about the Kia EV6. First up, I love its looks, both inside and out, and did you love that montage with the LED lights? And you know, it's, it's not just on the inside, it's on the outside too. 
and it's got like the puddle lights that are unique. I've never seen that before. Um, the back, the side, the front, not so much a big fan, but overall, I think this is an awesome looking car. The second thing I love is you can equip this car with a tow ball and it can do 700 kilograms unbraked or 1600 kilograms braked. The third thing I like is it's remote parking and summon. Great for people who maybe aren't too comfortable parking their car. Sure, it's slow, but yeah, it's, 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 it works most of the time. Those first three likes are very much common to most electric cars, in particular the upcoming Tesla Model Y, whenever that might be. Now, the next few are gonna be actually unique to the Kia EV6, and that is the relaxation seats, which are 10-way adjustable, are ventilated as well as heated, something the Model Y doesn't have, and have that relaxation position, which you just press with a touch of a button, which is lovely if you're just waiting around for someone, or you, don't, you can't be bothered getting out of the car to do something when you're getting a rapid charge, say. The next one is the automatic rear boot opening. Sure, there's other ways it could be done. There's the little kick swipey thing that some cars have. Um, but yeah, it's great that you can leave your hands, well, occupied say, and load stuff into and out of this car quite easily. My next like is that to keep the side profile nice and sleek and aerodynamic, you've got the auto flush door handles, which present out when you walk up to the car and it makes it obvious how you're gonna actually open it. So people who aren't familiar with a certain car won't have issues with this opening the door. The next one is I really love the quick access buttons to the heated steering wheel, heated front seats, and heated ventilated seats. They kind of go hand in hand with the premium seats, don't they? But you get the idea. Just having that ready access that you can just keep your eyes on the road and just go click, and it's done. The next one is a 360 degree camera suite that helps you with parking. And no less than like one, two, three, four, five. I don't know how many cameras there are in here, but it's really awesome. Really helps with actually understanding where things are and where things aren't and makes parking a real breeze. And finally, and this is the big one that very few cars in the world actually have, is this vehicle to load system. Now, before I was very cautious about running things concurrently because, you know, a kettle, a toaster and a TV, we might have um, pushed it beyond the 3.5 kilowatt maximum load. And that's why I sort of got some footage as to what the kettle was, what the toaster was, and then what the TV was. And combined, I could have actually had all three going and would have tripped it up. And this has got not only the external device here, but on the all wheel drive variant, you've also got the plug on the inside as well. The single motor version has only one on the interior. So when you put all these things together, I can understand why this car has won so many accolades and awards. Sure, a real bugbear of mine is the fact that it doesn't have an app so you can actually maybe preheat or pre-cool your cabin. Um, some people who like the fun of Teslas with the integrated uh, Netflix and games and things like that, yeah, they're not in here, but <laughs> you can do this. And well, you can't do this on a, um, a Tesla, can you? And this is it. Kia's got this out here and you can uh, get them and well right now and you can't get the Tesla Model Y. No, <laughs> who knows we're going to get it in Australia and it comes with that seven year 150,000 kilometer warranty which is the market leader in this space. I think Kia's got a very good and very successful car here that ticks a lot of boxes and definitely surpasses its competition. If you've enjoyed this video, maybe give me a subscribe, it's absolutely free. And come over here to Patreon, where you get early access to news, polls, behind the scenes, and a lot more that well, you just don't get here on YouTube. And as per usual, you be good and be green. Yeah, I'm watching the rise, and I wouldn't say I'm shocked cause I'm hardly surprised. This one's for the ride, this one's for who knew I'd make it, just needed some time. This one's for my wife, could've left a thousand times just so by my side. This one's for the grind, I knew it would happen, just had the strength.